We've come down from the Annapurna mountain range and we're in Chitwan National Park. Stumbling, fat spin, and if you don't, you're falling on your face again. The difference in landscape really is quite extraordinary. We're now surrounded by jungle, it's quite humid, uh, very, very different to the high alpine environment we were in just recently. But the thing that's really special about Chitwan is the wildlife. Um, it's the elephants, the rhinos, it's the tigers. Um, it's got an incredibly rich diversity of big mammals. So it's currently about 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I think it's fair to say that we're both feeling a little jaded. But apparently one of the best ways to explore Chitwan National Park is by elephant back. So we are uh, currently on elephant back um, doing some wildlife <laughs> spotting. It's absolutely beautiful here. It's a uh, crack of dawn. The jungle's still a bit misty. It's like uh, going through a sort of fairy tale landscape. It's awesome. We're visiting Chitwan and Bardia National Park in southern Nepal to learn about the work of the National Trust for Nature Conservation. One of their main objectives is to work with local communities to make them part of the conservation solution. And they've been incredibly successful, both at building support with these communities, but also at protecting and restoring the wildlife in the national parks. Unfortunately, that success does come with a cost. And this is something that we've heard a great deal about. And that's the issue of human wildlife conflict. They've got uh, one captive rhino here who was orphaned as a as a kid, and um, they tried releasing him into the wild a number of times, but uh, he kept coming back and he actually killed a villager um, when he was a grumpy teenager. And so uh, they built a big enclosure for him. And, uh... We have a lot of challenges, but the very important one is human wildlife conflict. The rhinos are around the people, and the elephants are around the people, the tigers are around the people. And then until they get some sort of benefit out of this conservation, we cannot actually conserve our species with the guns or with the patrols or with force. So we actually supporting to the local communities to minimize and to manage this human wildlife conflict. So we are trying to in, in, install the biogas plant, we are installing electric fence yeah, to, to preserve the wildlife and to preserve the people. So, we are having a fascinating education in what the communities around Chitwan National Park are doing with both private donor funding and also with the funding that they get from the National Park. Um, we've just seen an example of their biogas project, which is absolutely awesome on just a whole bunch of different levels. It has uh, multiple benefits, yeah? So, without that biogas plant, they have to go illegally inside the forest to collect the firewood. And if they send their cattle inside the park, they, they lose dung. So they put their cattle nearby and the grazing pressure inside the park also reduces. So it is good for the people, they get energy, it is good for the park, the, their conflict will be reduced and the environment safe. At the moment we're off to see another one of the projects that they have invested in and that's setting up an electric fence and this is to try to reduce the human wildlife conflict. So he will cross the river, will he? He'll just wade across the river from that Yeah. Point. He just go across and you know, try to come inside. And... But right now, right now our life is safe, our property is safe, our crops is safe, then we are positive with the wildlife. So we are ready to save that, yeah? Uh, so we're just about to have a look at some of the predator-proof corrals that NTNC have helped um, set up here in Bardia. Uh, we heard that they've got quite a big problem with the leopard. Uh, we can kill many livestock in one go. Most of the local community, basically the Thai communities, they are they are traditionally pig raisers. And every year they were lodging, losing a lots of lots of you know, um, piglets due to the uh, carnivores like leopards in this area. The problem was their traditional cages, traditional corals, you know, that was not that strong. The community developed it, and we just provided them the extra support so that. This is easily adopted with the community. A small investment can, you know, provide them the security from losing their cask property. Each and every day, the wildlife comes inside the uh, <coughs> village mm. and uh, kill the people, destroy their house, 
mm. and damage their crops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to address uh, that types of uh, uh, problem. Without the help of these people, uh, yeah, yeah, living near the forest, the other people, even the government and the other international community, will not uh, able to save that biodiversity. Yeah. So rhinoceros is here, so it's our duty to preserve it. It's uh, not only the wildlife uh, saving thing, it's a national pride issue also. Yeah. The, the national park is a global property. So we need uh, support from the global community because uh, to preserve the global property the all the global community have to come together and work there if we work together if they take the response to preserve the global property it's uh, easy to preserve yeah?